Hi everybody, welcome back to Brewing with Jim. This is the show where we take your question. Oh, I always start by introducing myself and sometimes I forget. <laughs> you didn't even do, introduce yourself. I didn't. No. <laughs> I'm putting a lot of trust in our audience that they know exactly who, who I we am. are, yes. If you're not familiar with me, first of all, I wouldn't blame you. Uh, my name is Joseph <laughs> Jasper. Uh, you can call me the producer, the co-host, the, the friend, whatever. Um, but I am All of here. Those, not that order. I'm not the important one in the studio right now. No, we are with. <laughs> we are joined, uh, as always, by Mr. Jim Brewington, um, pastor, ASL teacher, uh, friend. Let me take this away from you. Hi, everybody. Please. Uh, yes, I, it's good to be with you. Uh, we sound giddy this morning. I don't know why we're sounding so giddy, but uh, I think it's just always a good. It's, it's always a good vibe when we come in here. Well, we to are record. giddy most of the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I think we don't hate each other. So no, that's we a, don't. That's and a there's good a freedom baseline. of not standing in front of a, a room full of students. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, which we which both is ironic. Which we both dread. We have, well, we should, <laughs> because we have an audience. You know, I'm it's standing. true. Yeah, okay. All right. Let's go on with this. <clears throat> let's go. Yeah. Um, as always, we take your questions. We um, facilitate through email. Uh, there's a Google form for our students. Questions from our audience and from our student body to discuss wisdom, insight, things that can be helpful as we all navigate life. And we all have questions all the time. We do. And if um, you're not a student, don't hesitate to ask questions. Absolutely. We'll take them from anyone. Exactly. And in fact, I would say there's a good chance that this question does not come from a student, just based on the, the content of it. Okay. Uh, it certainly could come from a student. But our question for today is, when do I know when it's time for a new job? <laughs> Or to find a new job. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I love yeah. this. Okay, well, I guess... Uh, Something I'm thinking the, about the right now. The quick answer would be uh, <laughs> when you've just lost yours. Yeah. Yeah, now it's is time, a to, good time to find a new job. Yeah. Uh, let <laughs> me... Let's get a little bit uh, at least forthright here and uh, somewhat, I don't, I don't mean serious, but let's answer the question. Yeah. Uh, I have several thoughts about this, and one of them uh, in no particular order of priority, but... Uh, one of the uh, triggers that would uh, exist for when do I find a new job is when you hate to go to work, mm -hmm. when you just yeah. don't want to go to work. And uh, you, you can test yourself by, uh, well, first of all, you probably need to a lot. You know, I don't like working here. Yeah. But um, when you live for the weekends yeah. and celebrate the weekends yes. and on Sunday evening you start to get anxious or at least dread oh, uh, the, having to go to back to the sunday scaries the sunday okay have you ever heard that term before i have not yeah no my, my wife and i talk about that but that's been the thing that uh, i've heard people even not teachers sh say before they call it the, the sunday scaries well i can understand <laughs> that may be a hint that yeah. you don't like going to work sure uh, and you live for not only the weekends you live for any time off Sure. Uh, any holiday, you live ultimately, uh, well, you live for vacations. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And how many days is it going to be? Yeah. How many weeks is it? <laughs> and how many uh, yeah. <clears throat> days do I have uh, set up or saved or yeah. whatever HR does yeah. with all of that a lot stuff? of A lot of countdowns. <laughs> um, yes. I, I've had teachers and colleagues before that count down to summer or that count down to their own retirement before. Um where they, you know... <laughs> well, retirement's another one. You live for yeah, retirement. Exactly. Are, are which, you... by the way, is not a word or a concept that's in the Bible. Correct, yeah. Anywhere. Yeah. Uh, people have asked me, why are you not retired? Why are you not on the golf course? I wonder that all the time. And why I'm about <laughs> I'm me. Wonder, I'm wondering that right now. Yes, well, <laughs> no. uh, I don't care for golf that much. I've that's, tried it, yes. That's one reason, yeah. Uh, I'm too old to quit. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. Your uh, past retirement. What age. am I supposed to do? Go home and be a test pilot for the Barca Lounger uh, for the rest of my life and just sit there? I don't. That's yeah. not me. But there's a there's a clue that I don't like the job. Yeah. Uh, and so maybe I will start to think about finding another job. Yes. Uh, when another reason is when you realize 
that the job you're in is outside of your calling. Yeah. Now, we've talked about calling on episodes before, but just right. to recap and summarize, uh, your calling is what God has made you to focus on. Yes. What talents, what's, uh, what characteristic experiences you've had and so forth. But he has made some people... Uh, for a particular skill or talent, which still has to be developed. Yeah. But uh, he has called me, and there's no doubt in my mind now, even though there was before, I'm to, to be a teacher. Yeah. Yeah, I've been doing that since I was four years old, not standing in front of a classroom, <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> picture yeah. that one. But uh, always trying to give information to someone else for their benefit. Yeah. That's been in me. So yeah. when you're working in a job that's outside of your calling, uh, Find a job that's inside of your calling. Yeah. Now that of course, of course, requires that you identify what your calling is. <laughs> that's right. Uh, and yeah. that has been in another episode, so I'm not. That, going it to has. Yeah. That here. I, I I feel like knowing, like if you have a feeling, or uh, I guess let me ask you this as a follow up: How do you identify the feeling that? Oh, this is not in my calling. Like, right. What does that feel like? Right. I, I don't know that it's a feeling. I think it's more of a cognitive analysis. Or, sure. Or you're just thinking about, is this really what gotcha. my talent okay. is? I struggle with doing this job. I, yeah. I feel the, the feel, there I use the word, uh, the fit isn't right. Yeah. It, it's not me. I, yeah. And that's what gives me the hesitation to want to go that to makes work sense. every day. That makes sense. I, I could see that being either what you just said, which is this sense of not enjoying, not belonging, not it, it's not clicking in my head. It's, you know, that kind of thing. Right. Well, I can look around and at coworkers and say, these, these guys are on it. They love this. Exactly. They love doing And I don't love doing this. Yeah. But they do. Yeah. And so I'm right. the outcast here. Yeah. Well, I'm not outcast, but I'm not, I don't fit. Yeah. The, the second way I could see that identifying itself to you, and hopefully this is not a common thing, but would be just in complete ineptitude. That if you are just bad at oh, your I, job, yes, <laughs> yes, it's not probably not your calling. <laughs> That's probably not. Even though we all have to develop our skills, yes, uh, there's no way I'm going to develop a skill to do this. That's right. I just don't have the that's, wherewithal. I think that's even a better perspective because I think that everybody has times of their life where they may feel or may actually be a bit inept. I know for well, teachers, yeah. for example. It's a hard job, and it takes a long time and a lot of experience to start feeling really comfortable in front of a classroom and comfortable lesson planning and being confident in all the intricacies that go into it. No question. I, I may have shared before. I had a uh, there was this line from a education professor I had in college that told us you're going to suck for four years, and it was <laughs> and it was like it was a little bit reassuring in a way. Cut yourself a lot of grace. You know, there will be examples of ineptitude, but what you just identified, I think, is really wise, where it's the it's the willingness and the drive to get better. Yes. And if that is not in you, in it, if you are in a job that you cannot do well and you don't have a desire to get better at it, that I think is <laughs> there's a square, clue. square on the head, like a clue. <laughs> This is not your calling. Another reason that uh, a person may want to change jobs is if the values of the company or the entity you're yes. working for do not align with your personal values. Yes. Now, that the company or the entity for which you work um, may not align with all the values. I mean, if your value course, yeah. is... Um, uh, young children should not eat hard candy. It's not good for them. It's <laughs> sure. Okay. And uh, there's a candy dish at the reception desk in your company. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't say, okay, well, our values storm out of that place. I'm yeah. leaving. <laughs> I've had it with this place. I just sure. Can't. But if the um, it depends on your own values, of course. But yeah, if the company. Uh, requires you or even suggests that you are dishonest with the people you're serving. Yes. There, that doesn't line up with my values. If yeah. you sense or even uh, observe that the company is more interested in making money than they are in safety That's right. of their workers. Yes. Or their, um, or even the, the goals yeah. that the workers have, uh, which is to 
advance the purpose the company exists and you can't do that because yes. you view that as unethical or immoral yeah. or then it's time to find another job. Yeah. I think that that can manifest in, in a variety of ways. I think um, I think of like insurance companies and uh, <laughs> I have a friend that, um, you know, it was like their job for a while to adjust against their clients, you know, and sorry, we can't cover this for you True. because of this you know, whatever loophole, but you know, can't that happen in any, it can be in retail even. Oh, or I mean, certainly. Almost yeah, yeah, yeah. anything you do. That's just an example. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, if you're a pacifist, you probably won't work at like Lockheed Martin, you know, <laughs> like, I, you know, I mean like, yeah, you, I think you should <laughs> yeah. go to where your values align. <laughs> The NRA. Exactly. The rivals. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yes. Okay, well, <laughs> you got me uh, going here. If, if, if one of the values that I have that I have, uh, one of the behaviors that has become a strong value to me is have a day off. Yes. Now, that happens to be in the Bible. Uh, that's It does, yeah. God has that on the tablets right up there with do not commit adultery, yeah. do not murder. Uh, but if the company requires you that you work so hard you have no time to rest, yeah, that's anti-biblical. It's anti-good sense. Yeah, it's anti-physical. It's un unhealthy. It's, it's unhealthy. Yeah. It's and if you find yourself working uh, day and night, seven days a week, uh, with no days off, yes, time to find another job. Yeah, that's that one's just gone. Um, there are. I'm going to speak now, I think, to a smaller group in our mm -hmm. audience, but there are great advantages to being financially independent. Yeah. And if you are a W-2 worker, you are not financially independent. Well, you probably could. You probably are not financially independent. Mm -hmm. Now, is that uh, a luxury in life? Yeah, it is. Because yeah. then you can behave um, ethically in a noble way. Uh, any way you want to, and you can do the job sure. the way you want to do. You can work the times you want to work, yeah. because I don't need this um, overseeing yeah. on me to produce and That's right. to. So I think that if you your goal is to become financially independent, uh, mm -hmm. then it's time to find a way to do that. Yeah, um, absolutely. And sometimes people just want to move to another locale. Sure. You just I've yeah. I've had it with the highest taxes and the highest yeah. gas prices I mean, in our, the world, so I think I'm going to leave yeah. California. Former former co-host and producer Grady Sanchez oh, is yes off, in Idaho. You know, and off to Idaho. He's not there yet, but it's going to. Well, oh yes, he is. As this drops, as this episode is released, <laughs> yes, <laughs> he, is. he is in Idaho. Yeah, um, that's I miss him already. I, <laughs> We're recording this. I he's, think he's right he's, over he's there. A, he's in the other. He's like a room over. <laughs> <laughs> that was, um, you know what? I talked to Grady. Uh, there is this is an aside. I guess it's going to be uh, tolerated. But uh, <laughs> do his, I have a choice? Dad, uh, uh, yeah, because you oversee the editor. That is true. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> his dad is throwing a big party for him. Yes, and a goodbye party and. Thanks to his dad for doing that, I will not be attending. I don't like parties. I'm not <laughs> going to be able to say, say goodbye to him sure. when there are uh, tens and tens of people all over the place. Yeah. So I took Grady to dinner last week. Oh, that's and fantastic. we sat one-on-one -on -one and assured each other. We, we laughed most of the time. But we assured each other that this friendship is not going to end and it's going to continue. And both of us are going to initiate that. Okay. Yeah. That that's is, great. His desire to move to Idaho um, is irrelevant to the conversation, but he's going to do it, and so he's going to have to get another job. Well, yep. he already has one. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's a valuable person. Oh, and yeah. All he he's tremendous. Do, yeah, so he's been picked up already. But I think that it's legitimate to want to move somewhere else. I wouldn't move to escape a job. I would move yeah. for... Uh, I would move for reasons uh, as simple as I don't like the weather here. Sure. Or I'm going somewhere else. <laughs> or I want um, my kids to grow up in a different environment. Yeah. 
or whatever the reason yeah. is. But then it's time to start looking. You have to find another job if you're going to move. That's right. Probably, and yeah. unless you're a company that will transfer you. Mm. Oh, the U.S. That's mail. Right. You could be a letter carrier there for the go. U.S. mail. One of the benefits they promote is you can get a job anywhere in the United States. All you have to That's do is true. ask for a transfer. <laughs> That's right. But I don't know many companies that are no, more yeah. like that. Yeah. I think that uh, the desire to, uh, well, at least asking, thinking about getting another job. Mm -hmm. Anybody who doesn't once in a while think, uh, I want to get another job. Yeah, probably isn't worth uh, having where they are right now. If you're yeah. not smart enough to think, yeah, hmm, I wonder what it would be like I to was, work somewhere else. I was kind of thinking about this. Were I, you? I have like a follow up to the 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 original question. Do you have any more notes you want to? No. Pl okay. Um, because I have just heard it, this is in my own heart, but this is also something that I think a lot of teachers talk about and a lot of teachers talk to each other about. Um, at every school I've worked at, it just there's this sense, maybe it's exclusive to education, but maybe it's not. There, it feels like we're all thinking about leaving <laughs> at some point or another. And it's not- It's not it, exclusive to education. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I don't want to, panic our audience if you're connected to the CBCS community. It's not like there's going to suddenly be a mass exodus of all of us one day, but um, like it's just kind of always in the back of your head, like what if, and there's this grass is greener mentality that that is always kind of drawing your attention elsewhere sometimes. And uh, I think for education in particular, this, this, this world is... Um, this world is not always kind to teachers. <laughs> and well, true. Um, well, I, I think a lot of teachers think about not being teachers anymore. Um, what my follow-up question kind of is, is, you know, how do you weigh the, the question of should I get a new job or not when most of the reason for thinking about getting a new job has to do with maybe – you know, I, I might be really, really good at this and it, it you know, it's for providing financially and all that. But like, what if I'm just not really fitting in? And what if there's um, like imposter syndrome? I, I, I think of a lot, you know, um, is that articulated? I don't know what imposter syndrome is. You, oh, imposter syndrome is um, imposter syndrome is this idea that you believe that you are not. Uh, a fit for your role in some capacity so okay i just have never heard yeah, that yeah um all right it's like so it's extremely common and it's typically a fallacy but it's this idea of like everyone's going to find out that i don't know what i'm doing at any moment and i'm going to be you know what i mean <laughs> uh -huh. um super, super i experientially common. know what you mean yeah yeah very common um and it's, yeah, imposter syndrome. Like, I'm an imposter. I don't actually belong here. I, I can't actually do this. Um, but yeah. I think that um, if, if your desire, if your ambition mm -hmm. is to climb up the career ladder and sure. be uh, at the next step and then the next step, uh, I don't know what the high, the pinnacle of that is, but. If you're climbing up the ladder, then you're going to acquiesce to the position, the step you're on right now. Yeah. And I have to be at this step, and then I'll move to the next step, and then I'll move to the next step. Yeah. There are people, of course, I, well, wouldn't that be with many people mm -hmm. who, even in our, our school, there are people who would like to become teachers who would like to become the principal or who would like to be, I guess, I don't know. Maybe. I think, yeah. well. I don't think, uh, I don't think many of our teachers would would want to become would the principal. Want, no. I wouldn't. No, I wouldn't. I would think that would be a step down. <laughs> yeah, uh, because the highest job in the in the school is the teacher. Sure, we yeah. can and have gotten along without a principal. Mm -hmm. Now I don't want to. <laughs> of course, and, yeah. Uh, the school runs better when we are when we have the principal. <laughs> when we teacher, have leadership. When we have leadership. <laughs> But there, even in this school, two or three years ago, a uh, high school principal just left in the middle of the semester. Yeah. And then we had the head of school take over. Okay. My point here is that if you're climbing up the career ladder, 
uh, you don't really have to find a new job or a new position. You're just yeah. waiting for this step to be satisfied. And yeah. You are promoted to the next step. I'm climbing down the career ladder. And I yeah. there are others in this school who are doing that. Yeah. Because we have been there and it's our age and so forth. Climbing down the career ladder is just as difficult because I have been in management and been in decision-making positions in the military and in civilian life uh, all my life. Yeah. And now I'm not making the decisions. Sure. I'm sitting back and watching yeah. the decisions and made. And you are subject and, to other people's decisions. And I am subject to those. Well, always there's somebody. But sure, sure. yes, I am subject to their decisions. And I also do not agree with all the decisions. Yeah. Uh, I think I would have made another decision and done this slightly differently. But I uh, obey. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, I don't rebel against the decisions. <laughs> Uh, when it comes down to it at CVCS, I love it here. Yeah. I love it here. I've even thought of get, about getting T-shirts that say I love it here. <laughs> um, the church I attend, uh, some of the staff have T-shirts that say I oh, love it here. So it's amazing. It's not original. Does it idea. have the name of the place on it or does oh, it yes. just say oh, yeah. I love no, it No, here? no, no. Because I was going to say that shirt means a lot of different things if you wear it in different well, places. Well, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I never thought about that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Okay, all these places just yeah. popped up in my mind. You're just uh, in line at McDonald's, and the person next to you is just like, well, well okay. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I mean, it's just here. Or you're at a funeral. It's just McDonald's. Yeah. 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 <laughs> funeral. Or in a cemetery. Exactly. Yeah. So... <laughs> Uh, you have to be discreet about what you wear where. I think that's a good idea. Yeah, yeah okay. <laughs> I don't have any more suggestions. Okay. Uh, about yeah. About how to find it or when to find a new job. Yeah, I think that's perfectly okay. fine. I, We're done. I, I think at the end of the day, most people will have a sense. I think most people will know when it's time. Yes. Um, I would just some like last little bits of advice if you're kind of on that bubble or if it's just in the back of your mind. I would say like... Um, definitely do be 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 transparent with your boss <laughs> about where you're at um, unless it's going to um, unless it's going to somehow damage a, your standing or a relationship or something um, or if your boss has a personality with which it would be uh, jeopardizing yes. to be transparent in yeah. which case maybe I should find a new job and yeah I was gonna say like the situation where you would not talk to your boss about this would be one where you don't trust or respect your boss. Right. And then that already is a situation for where you should dip. So um, assuming you do actually trust and respect um, the people that you work with and the people that you work for, I would just kind of mention it. And it, I, yeah, I, I, I think transparencies and communication is just helpful for a situation like this. There's another... Uh, thought that just popped into my mind when you said that because you said that yeah and that is that if you have uh if you want to have a conversation with somebody that may be confrontational um uh, i always will say uh i would like to meet with you i need your advice mm. and then they are in a position of oh wow yeah this isn't going to be confrontational he's going to want to know my wisdom That's and really so forth. Good. And then I go to him and I would say, uh, in this context, uh, I'm having some difficulty adjusting yes. to this and to this and, and yeah. this particular path and whatever it yeah. is. Uh, what do you suggest I can do to yes. help me here? Yeah. And then it, I love you that. brought it to his attention yeah. that uh, this is an issue. Yeah. I think another thing that that gets at, which was going to be the second thing I was going to say, is to understand that sometimes a um, a feeling of this isn't working out, maybe I, maybe you feel as an employee misunderstood by the rest of the organization or by your boss or something. Um, something that I've discovered in, in my career um, is don't always assume that the that the problem is um, outside of yourself, uh, or that it's that it's their fault for not recognizing you, or that it's their fault for not putting you in the right place. Um, I think that there's this there was this young rebellious heart in me 
um, at, at different times in my career that says like, the school should be doing this and I should be doing this and then it would be in the work and everything like that. And it's, it, it just took lots of discussions and discernment and wisdom to discover actually the thing that would make this work the best for everybody is actually if I adjusted my routines and my expectations a little bit. Right. And that ends up smoothening. Is that a word? Sm- smooth, smoothing out? Smoothing. Not that I know of, but, but it is now. But we, we understand what, what I mean. That uh, a, a humility and an adjustment in my heart and in my workflow ends up being beneficial to everyone, including myself. The, well, ultimately, yeah. yes. Ultimately, if you uh, disagree with most of the decisions that people are, get yourself in a position where you own your own company and then you can make the decision <laughs> sure. and then surround yourself with people who disagree with you. Yes. That's important. You don't want yes men. That's yeah. a waste of time, a waste of money. Yeah. Uh, if you don't disagree with me, what do I need you for? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. That's fantastic. I think that's a good place to end. Me too. Um, let's jump to the second segment, which is the... Uh, part of the show, uh, we like to call it the Surprise Gym segment. And uh, audience, if you've never heard this before, the name is self-explanatory. It's where I bring a question that Jim does not know ahead of time. Right. It's usually a sur- – it, 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 it always is a surprise. It usually has to do with life or experience or something kind of more, more fun or just introspective. Um, Jim, my question for you today is – are you ready for this? I don't know how to be ready. Just do it. <laughs> exactly. I just, I just love, <laughs> I love, I love sitting in the fact that you're not ready sometimes for a, for a question, because um, you always come so prepared for the first question. I feel like I have to sometimes go overboard with the second question. Um, here's the question: In what ways do you take after what your parents were like, and in what ways are you different than they were? Oh my goodness. Um, well, I had good parents. Yeah. I had good parents, uh, uh, a solid marriage. That doesn't mean everything was uh, the wedding night. Of course. But yeah. it was uh, a good a good place to grow up. It's fantastic. I had two yeah. Christian parents. Uh, they had um, idiosyncrasies that um, I never thought about copying, mm. but I can see myself oh, as yeah. my dad sometimes. <laughs> uh, you're, the question was what what was it characteristics or yeah like in what okay. ways are you like um, them and in what ways are you not like my them? dad was tidy mm-hmm. uh, and everything had its place yeah and it was um it was designed to be in a certain place or yeah. the place was designed i'm that way yeah i'm that way i my classroom is extremely organized yeah but I'm not smart enough to work in this organization. <laughs> sure. I yeah. have to have things. I'm teaching sick classes. I have another advisor. We call them advisory groups. And then we have all these uh, rots, the responsibilities other, other than, than teaching. teaching. Yeah. And I have to be organized to keep all of that straight, plus right. all the students' grades. And so, okay. Uh, my, I got that from my dad. I got that from him. Yeah. Uh, he told me little things. Uh, he was a business executive. He was, uh, believe it or not, there is such a book. He was who's who in American insurance. Uh-huh. And uh, <laughs> not something you'd want to curl up with in front of a fireplace. Sure. But uh, he uh, taught me uh, certain <laughs> office procedures and how you, uh, that you always, when you're building a file, you always put the newest on the top. Mm-hmm. Well, all those things have influenced me quite a bit. Yeah. I asked him one time if uh, you were driving in a, a cross country and there's this big open place and then there's a stop sign out in the middle of this highway and there's no cars within miles, would you stop? And yeah. his answer was quick. He said, yes, I would. Yeah. I would stop uh, if nobody saw me because uh, that's the integrity you have. Mm-hmm. To Okay. Those kinds of, of influences are still with me. Yeah. My mother uh, was uh, a good mother and she loved uh, my brother and me. It was clear to us that that was the case. Yeah, She was not the same as my father, which I think is the design. That's what you want. Yeah, the, the, A child needs a mother and a father. And I uh, can still remember some of the things that she said to me that involved mostly the Lord. Uh, Follow, follow what the Lord wants you to do and be. Yeah. Uh, a lot of it was spiritual. 
like that. She was also very open in her conversation. She was almost blunt yeah. uh, and <laughs> forthcoming. Oh. Um, and, and you could ask almost anybody, uh, yes, I have that characteristic. <laughs> sure. I would, um, gosh, I haven't seen you in a long time. You really gained a lot of weight. What happened? <laughs> and uh, it was, uh-huh. Do yeah. do oh your makeup. Jim, Jim I saw you on Friday. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. <laughs> well, not you, yeah. not you. No, yeah, yeah. The uh, she was a beautiful woman, mm -hmm. uh, just I mean physically beautiful. And you got that from her. And clearly. she was uh, clearly no, <laughs> uh, but uh, she knew how to dress properly. She was a lady, sure, and she knew how to dress properly. I was talking to uh, my wife Debbie about current um, makeup uh, trends <laughs> for women right now. And I, every generation has looked back, I think, or every, yes, generation. Sure. Yeah, I can't believe we dress like that during yeah. that decade. <laughs> yeah. What was it, what were we thinking? Yeah. I think that's going to happen in spades right now mm -hmm. uh, with the, the cakes and cakes of makeup <laughs> and sure. the eyelashes that go up to the hairline sure. and, the, um, <laughs> and the eyelash extensions uh, where all of a, a woman has to do is look down and sweep the floor <laughs> with her eyelash <laughs> extensions. Uh, and I learned yesterday they're called Bambies. I, oh, wow. I had no idea. And I was talking to somebody about this. And, uh, yes, those are called Bambies. Oh, wow. I think that's uh, going to go away. And my idea of beauty uh, in or good, let me just call it good-looking women, mm -hmm. good-looking men, uh, who are groomed and care for themselves, that came from my mother. Mm -hmm. That came from, so those two characteristics come to mind uh, right away. Yeah. I could probably ponder more and think of other things too. Sure. Yeah. But I had good parents. So yeah, I'm that's grateful. Fa fantastic. A any, any big differences? Were there any ways as you were growing up you realized, I am not like dad, I'm not like mom in this way? Oh yes. Yeah. Oh, of course. I don't want to. I. But we end up catching. I. Ca I end up catching myself. But, ooh, that was just like my dad. Aww. Oh, that was yeah. just you know. Yeah. Um. And that's that's more what your mind catches. I think so. Yeah. I think so. The question was to me, and <laughs> yeah. it was about me, and yeah. that's. You had great parents. And now I want to be a parent, or I hope I was a parent. <laughs> sure. Yes. It was apparent that I was a parent. <laughs> 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 and I yeah. want to uh, my kids to look back and say, yeah, it was good. And yeah. I am getting fee that feedback now. Oh, I love that. Yeah. I love that. Okay. How many years did it take for that feedback to come? I have a one-year-old or about to be one-year-old at home. So far, he has not been very affirmative of my parenting. No, well. Verbally or, you know, what, otherwise. What do you expect? <laughs> I'm, I'm joking. But and I'm not going to answer yeah. your question. Okay. It, it, it comes when it comes. Okay. Yeah. I love that. Uh, let's wrap this up. Uh, let's do. Thanks again, Jim, for uh, obliging these questions. Well, and, you know I like doing this. Yeah, I, I do too. Thank you to our audience especially for submitting uh, today's question. And we want to extend an invitation to everybody listening to please reach out to us uh, with more questions or even just to say hello and introduce yourself. You can reach out to us with the email address brewingwithjim at gmail.com. We check that all the time, and we are happy to engage with you, get to know you, and just hear from you. So, Indeed, yeah. yeah. That was we, we have now, looking at the analytics, I think it's 10 countries wow. that have listened to at least to one episode wow. or, and, or more than one. Yesterday, this week, two in Nigeria. Wow. And I'm thinking, what is this guy doing in Nigeria <laughs> <laughs> listening to us? Wow. But if you are in a uh, country other than the United States, uh, I especially would like to hear from you. That's right. What is your um, feedback? Absolutely. What's your story? How, how did you hear about us <laughs> um, from across an ocean? That's, that's awesome. Um, yeah, again, thank you for listening. Uh, this wraps this up. Uh, That's it. Have done. a great week, everybody. Bye bye. Bye. The topics that are covered and the answers that are offered during episodes of Brewing with Jim are designed to mine the wisdom attained from a life of pastoral ministry and care. 
they do not constitute professional or clinical training or expertise in the areas of counseling or mental health. CVCS and its podcast network want to provide a platform for the discipleship of our community. Brewing with Jim is our attempt to foster that environment in a format that is accessible for everyone to participate in. The views, thoughts, and opinions expressed during the show are the speaker's own, and they may or may not represent the views, thoughts, or opinions of Capistrano Valley Christian Schools or its faculty. The material and information presented here is for general information purposes only. This episode has been a production of the Capistrano Valley Christian Schools Podcast Network. Capistrano Valley Christian Schools is a Christian JK-12 school in San Juan Capistrano, California. Be sure to check out, subscribe to, and leave a review of this show and the other shows on our network on your podcast player of choice. Doing so supports the school community in a multitude of ways. For more information about the CVCS Podcast Network or any of our other shows, check out cvcs.org or email podcasts at cvcs.org. On behalf of the whole network, this is Mr. Jasper saying thank you again for listening and stay tuned for more.